thank you so much for taking the time. I, I really appreciate it. And um, I think it's very important to include your perspective. And um, Tatiana, who was my point of contact, mentioned that you mm -hmm. will have probably a lot of very relevant thoughts to share on the subject. Um, so to explain, like I'm, I'm a reporter on the House and Home section, and uh, my focus is Belgrade Waterfront. But mm -hmm. obviously, it's really difficult to write about Belgrade Waterfront without the whole political situation in Serbia. and. Um, and the Brexit um, perspective of it. Say again? And the Brexit perspective of it. Oh, uh, if you want, we can go there, but I would... <laughs> we, can, we might never finish the chat, but... <laughs> I have to tell you, it's, it's fascinating to watch. Is it? I mean, yes, it is. We're already so tired of it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I'm glad it's entertaining to people outside. <laughs> oh, it's more than entertaining. I mean, it's very serious and it's, it's, it, it is interesting. I think history is being written. That is true, that is true. Um, I'm very sad actually because I'm a pro Remainer. <laughs> no, I, I, I understand. I, I'm the opposite, so. Are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, well. Um, great. Uh, well, so um, because my, my subject is uh, bug water Waterfront primarily, I was wondering if you, just for starters, could share your perspective on the development and how it came to be and what's controversial about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was a minister of economy, as you might know, from, uh, I mean, it was end of 2013 till the beginning of 2014, four months and 23 days, after mm -hmm. which I resigned because of corruption in the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the deals with um, Arabs, as they were uh, mm -hmm. labeled, and I would say mm -hmm. Arabs under quotes, because I yeah. haven't seen a single Arab yeah. doing the negotiations, all the negotiations mm -hmm. about all the projects that they are doing in mm -hmm. Serbia uh, mm -hmm. from the Emirates were done by two uh, legal offices in Belgrade uh, mm -hmm. and a team that ran a former Minister of Economy, his name is Mlađan Dinkić. And they basically uh, developed all the deals between the government of Serbia and the so-called uh, Arabs from the uh, Emirates. Uh, there mm -hmm. is, a, I think, strong suspicion uh, for which a mm -hmm. uh, prosecutor would need to do their job. And uh, I mean, Serbia, mm -hmm. they, they don't, although I have submitted criminal complaints and, and submitted mm -hmm. uh, material about it, is money laundering. Mm -hmm. And it's the money that's been taken out of Serbia through various mm -hmm. means of, of mm -hmm. uh, embezzling public funds. And mm -hmm. then they are being washed and returned back uh, mm -hmm. to Serbia through funds in uh, investment funds in United Arab Emirates where those funds basically just take their cut of the uh, overall deal and then that money comes back to Serbia and with that money the I mean people that are taking the money out of the country and that is the government and people in power mm -hmm. are then buying assets in Serbia. Uh, it's the land in, in the Belgrade mm -hmm. waterfront, it's also the agricultural land in Vojvodina, mm -hmm. in various places, uh, companies and so on and so, so forth. So mm -hmm. I believe that that's what the background of all of these uh, things mm -hmm. and so-called investments in Serbia is. Mm -hmm. um, and has there been any tangible proof so far that, um, of the, any wrongdoing? Uh, well, I have uh, I have submitted uh, all that I have to the prosecutor's office, and uh -huh. as you m uh, may understand and appreciate, it's not uh, something that uh, any citizen, even including the opposition politician, can okay. can do. That's the job of the prosecutor's office. But I believe uh -huh. we gave them enough pointers yeah. on yeah. things that they need to check. Uh -huh. for them to do their job. Just uh -huh. the simple fact that it's uh -huh. uh, uh, people that are connected to the Serbian government, to uh -huh. uh, Mr. Vucic, his brother, the whole family, uh -huh. uh, including the, some of his key people, like the Minister of Finance, uh, uh -huh. Sinisha Shamali, uh, uh -huh. his brother, uh, then the Minister of Police, the father of the yeah. Minister of Police, connected to, to the arms trade deals that yeah. we've seen recently. Uh, all of that uh, would uh, point to uh, basically the, the system that the people in power developed to mm -hmm. you know, rob the taxpayers. As far as the Belgrade waterfront is concerned, the land itself, it's about uh, 100 hectares, that's mm -hmm. 10,000 square meters. Um, mm -hmm. uh, its, uh, its value in Belgrade is about mm -hmm. a billion euros. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that land, and that's the prime real estate property, I believe in the Balkans, mm -hmm. not just uh, yeah. Belgrade, is given uh, for free. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to uh, so-called investment funds and the companies yeah. they've, they've, they've formed so that they can build uh, apartment buildings, uh, the office space and, and such uh, without paying anybody anything, mm -hmm. then sell those and out of the proceeds, government might get something. And basically mm -hmm. the way the deal is structured is that the government gets, mm -hmm. I believe, about a third mm -hmm. of the profits yeah. of the uh, corporations that, that were set up and that signed the deal. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the Parliament of Serbia ratified uh, those deals and all the mm -hmm. laws that were necessary uh, for them. So basically, you have people that with zero investment actually yeah. captured the prime real estate and, and are I mean, making uh, tons of money on it, and that's basically taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. You mentioned zero investment as in, just to make sure I understand correctly, because when I write about it, I have to be very clear. Mm -hmm. yep. the, um, that basically, because it's not the money coming from the investors, because their identity is still unclear, mm -hmm. um, it's basically the money that's being taken out of Serbia, money, big that's money that you know, needs laundering. And that this is the way it's coming back through, which is why you call it zero investment. Uh, yes, that that is correct, mm -hmm. and I mean it is it is a, I mean a very simple money laundering uh, scheme, and the money mm -hmm. is going through a number of countries that are mm -hmm. doing the same types of deals. So the mm -hmm. autocrats in power are cooperating with one another. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, your um, your main argument is for like basically presenting it is because obviously like you submitted evidence and um, the, it's for the prosecutor's office to determine whether it's it's valid. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically uh, the fact that, um, could you actually tell me like in your own words how, like why do you think it is that you think it's a money laundering scheme? Because I don't want to put words in your mouth. Sure. Like, again, yeah. Well, the key is that all the companies that are building, let's say, in the water, mm -hmm. Belgrade waterfront, all the people that are making yeah. the decisions are all yeah. connected to the government mm -hmm. and people in power. There are no Arabs. I mean, I don't know anybody who would make a sizable investment and have no interest in their investment and basically have only the local people uh, determine who gets the money and how much. So it's their construction companies, it's their, I mean, okay. everything is theirs. And uh, uh, by doing these deals, I mean, they are paying a significant amount, uh, amount of money to those building, building companies so that the profits, I would suspect at the end would be zero. So the, uh, or would be something symbolic so that they can sh say that, let's say, oh, the government of Serbia made 50 million euros on this deal, whereas the land itself, yeah. uh, I mean, not, not to talk about all the other fees that need to be paid, like the, you know, uh, getting ready, I mean, the, preparing the, the land for, mm -hmm. for being built, the infrastructure that has to build, be built with it, which is mm -hmm. all paid. Uh, by the taxpayers and that every other builder who wants to build needs to pay uh, certain fees that are significant fees in order to build anywhere anything. I mean if they just took that land uh, I mean uh, made some uh, plan for how to develop it and then broke it down into into smaller uh, yeah. uh, lots of land I mean they could have made I, I believe even more than a billion uh, Euros. So essentially, all of that money uh, disappeared through this scheme. A billion euros. Yeah, at, at least. Yeah, at least. Mm -hmm. um, all right. And when you're talking that talking about the the fact that all companies that are involved in the building process are connected to. Um, the government or the people in power, you mean the construction companies, but also Serbian construction yes, companies. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. The Serbian construction companies and then also the uh, construction companies from abroad that then subcontract the Serbian construction companies. So, I mean, it's all taken care of, every aspect mm -hmm. of the deal. I mean, it's very simi uh, similar to, let's say, when uh, Azerbaijani company uh, mm -hmm. gives a loan to the Serbian government to build uh, 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 build a highway, let's say, between two cities. And then their companies are doing the building, they are subcontracting local companies, I mean, an enormous amount of money is flowing out of the mm -hmm. country. And I mean, it's the same sort of deal, so they then split up the money 
uh, afterwards. I mean, this Belgrade waterfront is one of such uh, projects. Now, in order to uh, prosecute this, I mean, the I mean, a prosecutor would need to get some international help. I have been, before I became a mm -hmm. Minister of, of Economy, I've been working with the mm -hmm. prosecutor's office, with the police, training them mm -hmm. on how to process uh, mm -hmm. financial fraud, how to uh, process uh, economic yeah. crime. And basically we developed all these schemes because uh, in the past they didn't have much knowledge about it, so we, we got plugged uh -huh. into uh, all the appropriate uh, um, you know, places and had relationships with, with mm -hmm. international police, the foreign police departments that are doing the same sort of thing. So it's something that the prosecutor needs to do. I can't yeah. you know, write a letter to them and tell them, I mean, please, uh, I mean, tell me the money coming out of a account of a public enterprise, uh, let's say socially owned uh, enterprise that paid some bogus uh, uh, invoices coming from some other countries that are measured in, in you know, tens and sometimes hundreds yeah. millions of euros. I mean, where do they go and where did they end up? Uh, luckily, mm -hmm. money always leaves trail. It's just a matter of whether you are uh, willing to pursue it. Now, uh, I mean, you need a government that actually wants to, uh, you know, uh, pursue these things. And what we have is the opposite. Unfortunately, uh, in, it's not just this government. It's yeah. the government before this government as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a government before that government. So, I mean, we mm -hmm. have a... Uh, sort of the same uh, system in place for the last 30 years, since Milosevic mm -hmm. up until today, and yeah. it's all about uh, money. Mm -hmm. <sighs> um, and um, in this system, because I assume like the prosecutor's office is somehow connected and plugged into this system, like, do you expect any success out of the... Um, uh, submission? No, I mean I've I've filed uh, many uh, criminal complaints uh, on mm -hmm. on on many number of of uh, corrupt cases. As I mean, I filed some of them as a minister, mm -hmm. so uh, and none of them had any results. I mean, what what they do? Uh, I mean, the purpose that they do have is uh, we've said something, and there is a record of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm an op one of the opposition leaders and uh, we are fighting to get into power and uh, yeah. basically the, one of the things that, that is a big part of our program is that mm -hmm. we will finally prosecute huh? these things or oh, actually let the prosecutor, make yeah. the pro prosecutor's office do their job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, unfortunately, that's all they uh, serve for today. Mm -hmm. Even when I worked, uh, uh, before I became a minister, worked for the prosecutor's yeah. office as, a, as an independent consultant with my team, um, we <clears throat> solved a number of cases that were not prosecuted afterwards. Mm -hmm. They were just, yeah. uh, deals were made and, uh, I mean, everything was uh, sort of, uh, put under the under the rug, and you have that continuation for thirty years, where the, every new uh, government or the coalition in power is protecting the previous one, yeah. and uh, I mean everybody is sort of continuing through uh, unpunished. So yeah. we were. It's it's kind of sad because when you work, let's say, with the with the young policemen that are really eager mm -hmm. to do their job and protect yeah. the interests of the people, you yeah. see how disappointed they get when the yeah. you know um, investigations that. They they run that where they believe they I mean they, they got the evidence and then they uh, the whole thing gets eventually stopped uh, yeah. I was for example one uh, working on the Mishkovic case if you're familiar with Serbia at all it was a big case one of the biggest tycoons in Serbia was uh, arrested and everybody attributed that to Vucic and actually it had nothing to do with him it mm. was something that was done completely independently yeah. and then they, they sort of looked at the ways to stop it mm -hmm. So do you think, um, because you mentioned that you know, the prosecutor would need to get some international help, would it take an intervention from outside, like, like outside body like the EU or, um, I don't know, I don't even know international criminal court, I'm not entirely clear mm -hmm. on like, whose remit is that? Well, I mean, it, it starts from, from Serbia, where you mm -hmm. see, uh, I mean, th that's where the money flow originated from, mm -hmm. and then you have to just follow the trail of money. So okay. it's, uh, I mean, it depends on through which country they went and, I mean, yeah. just follow to, to see where the money uh, went yeah. to. It's, it's not that difficult. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a lot of work, yeah. uh, th that's for sure, but, I mean, it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm.
Great. Um, well, well, one thing that mm -hmm. I, I have to say, I mean, and yeah. that's basically that point where we disagree about uh, EU. I, yeah. I guess we talked <laughs> a bit about Brexit. You see, yeah. EU uh, knows all about this. Yeah. I they are here on the ground. They know exactly what the government is doing. Uh, not just in this area on corruption, you know, taking money uh, out of out of the budget, uh, misusing uh, taxpayers' money, but also about the state of democracy, the state of media. Uh, I mean, the way our elections been rigged, uh, the voter registry. That that I mean, we have uh, in Serbia 6.8 million voters and 5 million identification documents issued. So I mean, there is okay. 1.8 million missing there. So. They know all of this, mm -hmm. and basically every single EU official that comes to Serbia, they have that one famous sentence that says Serbia is going in the right direction. And I mean, so I mean, it's a uh, uh, we. I, I first tried talking to them and asking them why it happens, and then afterwards I realized they do understand everything that's happening and that okay. this is something that they want. And it's not just Serbia; it's the whole of Balkans. So the interests are, uh, I mean, the, the autocrats in power in all the countries in Balkans are doing something that's in EU's interest. So that's why EU is uh, tolerating them and actually helping them stay uh, in power. Because when you send a message, mm -hmm. Serbia is going in the right direction, then the voters in Serbia said, well, uh, there is an independent, you know, uh, commission that's looking at Serbia and says, well, everything is fine. So what are you guys from opposition saying? Because everything's fine. Yeah, um, that is very interesting. And um, do you think, therefore, that Serbia should stay on the path of pursuing membership of the EU, or do you rather say maybe not? Well, uh, I believe that mm -hmm. EU is a bad project that's mm -hmm. going to end up badly. Uh, we mm -hmm. do need uh, European integration, but it has to be integration of sovereign states. We mm -hmm. have now politicians in power over there that nobody elected, that are mm -hmm. not responsible to the citizens. So mm -hmm. uh, our party is called Enough is Enough. Mm -hmm. And we say that we are pro-Europe, anti-EU. EU is yeah. not Europe. EU mm -hmm. is a project that went in a bad direction. And uh, I mean, the, at, at, uh, at the core of it is, uh, is a financial system, which I believe mm -hmm. is the main uh, sort of a, a piece that's tying it all together where the European Central Bank is running policies that are pushing sovereign states into debt mm -hmm. for no uh, reason whatsoever. So we are anti-EU but pro-Europe uh, yeah. party. Okay, that sounds true. Um, that's absolutely fine. I'm just curious because I think the question of membership is quite relevant in the whole process and as you mentioned it you didn't feel that you is helping. So well, I actually, like this. yeah, I, I, I see them actually pushing things in the wrong direction because mm -hmm. there is a cooperation from Serbian government. I mean, if mm -hmm. this is not a, I mean, issue for the interview, but I, I can mm -hmm. give you a main reason if you're interested. Sure, absolutely. I'll With it's, uh, it's uh, the, the main issue are migrants that are coming through Serbia. And uh, Serbia is the first country that gives them, and that's agreement that Mr. Vucic has with Angela Merkel. Yeah. Uh, Serbia gives them a piece of paper on, which says that they apply to asylum in Serbia. Uh -huh. I mean, they apply for asylum in Germany, but the Serbia yeah. is the place where they file an intent to file for an asylum. Okay. That piece of paper is basically uh, uh, something that will get them to Germany because yeah. if you decide to uh, return them back then you return them either to the country of origin and if you can't then you are returning them to the country of first entry. So essentially you have migrants coming into Europe, into Greece, through mm -hmm. Bulgaria, Macedonia, none, no, no, these countries are not giving mm -hmm. them any papers and the Serbia is the first one that does yeah. that. So cooperation on this particular issue is what the, I mean why Mr. Vucic has the full support. He's even trying to ta yeah. talk to our uh, citizens telling them that you know we have a lot of young people leaving Serbia because the situation is really bad. Yeah. It's about 50,000 a year. And he okay. says that well the migrants will be coming in and then by 2000, 2030 uh, you'll have the same number of our people leaving as the number of migrants coming in because we'll need a workforce for the as a cheap labor for the yeah. german companies that are that are opening their factories in serbia yeah yeah understood wow this is so complex yes it is uh yeah it's uh um 
it's probably a method, as you said, for, for a separate thing. Um, okay, um, going back to, like, to the Belgrade waterfront, um, is, are you aware of any laws having been broken or bent or made not relevant in, in order to make way for the development? Uh, well, I mean, uh, th there is a lex specialis or a special law has been passed mm -hmm. that sort of uh, puts all the deals that are done in connection to all the Arab investments mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. uh, Arab Emir Emirates investments, mm -hmm. sort of a special deal uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, the laws do not apply to. So when they sell them ag agricultural mm -hmm. land, where before they do that, they have to offer that land to businesses that are already there. That's the law in, mm -hmm. in Serbia. Uh, and the, 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 you know, the little farms that, that are there that might expand and get more land for mm -hmm. their fam, mm -hmm. farm, I mean, they cancel that. So the deals mm -hmm. are done directly with the, with the government and with the Minister mm -hmm. of Finance. The same is for the uh, land in Belgrade, for example, for that uh, Belgrade waterfront, where the land needs mm -hmm. to be offered on an auction. Mm -hmm. uh, to the to the bidders I mean none of that is uh, I mean mm -hmm. present here so it's all direct dealings between the government and whoever mm -hmm. the the investor is uh, as, as far as money laundering I mean I, I suppose mm -hmm. I don't have to explain I mean yeah. how many laws have been broken there yeah well <laughs> uh, that is yeah that is in itself I suppose like a um, like massive wrongdoing um, so basically would you say that bypassing rather than bypassing the existing laws is that the way it's a, it's a combination of bypassing and mm -hmm. and uh, right out broke breaking uh, mm -hmm. the laws and uh, i mean when mm -hmm. the prosecutor's office is not doing their job mm -hmm. and they're not because they are politically appointed and they all mm -hmm. fear for their job so i mean that's uh, essentially the system uh this is how we have it in poland now as yeah. well so I totally feel how uh, frustrating that feels. Well, it is um, very frustrating. The, the most frustrating thing is when mm -hmm. uh, EU officials come over and say that Serbia is going in the right going direction. The right direction. Now, I, I can offer to you, uh, I mean, I'm sure she would accept uh, uh, another person to talk to, Miroslava Milenovic. Uh -huh. uh, she's uh, somebody I worked with closely. We were together mm -hmm. at the prosecutor's office. Yeah. I think she's, she's investigating financial crimes all, all around the world. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she knows about this and many other cases uh, okay. as well. That would be great. I would, I would appreciate being put in touch with her. Yes. Is there is there anything else that you feel um, I should know about or I should be asking about around the, the Belgrade waterfront development specifically? Well, I mean, it's a, uh, that deal is just a part of a much larger deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, a much larger deal covers not only the agricultural land, it covers the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Etihad investment, mm -hmm. uh, then investment uh, in the uh, airport in Belgrade. Uh, mm -hmm. That is connected to the arms trade mm -hmm. uh, uh, because it's used, uh, I mean, the, the flights that are uh, being used in that route are the flights, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that, that are connected through these companies. Yeah. So it's, it's a much bigger... Uh, yeah. scheme than just the Belgrade yeah. uh, uh, waterfront, although even uh, that piece of the overall puzzle is something worth mm -hmm. uh, investigating for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not unfortunately able to like have a, a very like a full-blown investigation, but for sure. you know, but um, because it's not exactly the scope of my piece, but I would like to have as many voices around it and as many sides mm -hmm. to it. I've been to Belgrade actually, I saw the development, I spoke to the people in the streets and in um, mm -hmm. the city, um, just like asking about their opinions and um, hoping still to speak to the Transparency Serbia mm -hmm. the organization, mm -hmm. yeah. just to you know, have it covered. But I would really appreciate being put in touch with Miroslav Amilenovic. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be a useful a useful voice as well. Sure, we'll do that. As far as this bigger deal for the arms trade, I think yes. Spiegel in Germany wrote about yeah. that. There is a number of articles there, so that can be a reference. Uh -huh. Okay, that could be a reference. That's, that's definitely, yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you okay. so much for your time. I really Thank appreciate you. it. And uh, um, good luck in the election. <laughs> Thank you. And you Bye. with Brexit. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>